Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 22 of the chapter Equilibrium. We were discussing the factors affecting equilibria and till part 21 we had discussed all the factors like concentration, pressure, the presence of an inert gas, temperature and now in this part I am going to tell you what is the effect of adding a catalyst to the equilibrium. So the topic would be the effect of catalyst on equilibrium. But before I come to discussing the effect of catalyst on equilibrium, let us understand what a catalyst is. You are preparing for an exam and you are studying on your own. And when you are studying on your own, you are finding it a little difficult to understand. And then comes along a teacher like me and I help you understand the topic. So what happens with my help, you understand the topic faster and therefore you get prepared faster for your exam. What did I do? I only helped you a little. It was you who was supposed to appear for the exam. You appeared for the test. You got your marks. You did the, the reaction was yours. I was only a helper. I came, I helped you a little and made your work easier. That is the job of a catalyst. A catalyst is something that comes and helps out a chemical reaction. And how does it help it? It helps it by making that chemical reaction easier. If we imagine this graph and we take R to be the energy of the reactants and P to be the energy of the products, the energy of reactants is usually higher than the energy of the products. And what does a catalyst do? And how does the reaction take place? Let us first understand that. You are running a race. You are about to run a race. So before you run a race or you're about to start your workout in the gym, what do you do? You warm yourself up. So that warming up is a kind of an activation energy. You're getting a little, you're activating yourself for that physical activity that you're going to do, which you're supposed to do in order to run that race or to work out at the gym. So initially, <coughs> the reactants, they have to gain energy in order to react. And that energy is known as the activation energy. So they gain energy, they get the activation energy, and once the activation energy is achieved, only then the physical activity starts or only then the reaction starts. So activation energy is given and is absorbed by the reactants and then the reactants they start reacting with each other and once the products are formed they are stable and the energy of the products is lower than the reactants which means that the products are more stable and therefore they release all that activation energy plus that little extra energy which is acquired due to the stability. So the energy of activation was just given to start the reaction or it was the warming up energy. Now this is what a normal course of a reaction is. What happens when you add a catalyst? A teacher comes in. You were preparing for your exam. Your preparation was your activation energy. You had to work hard to get there. Then the exam started and then you got stability and now you have a good job in your stable. You do not have to work so hard. And what, does, what did the catalyst do? The catalyst when it comes, it makes the activation energy lower. It makes, it decreases the effort in order to carry out the reaction. So the warming up in the gym or before a race becomes lesser with the presence of a catalyst. So once the catalyst comes in, the activation energy decreases and that is how a catalyst helps a reaction to take place. Now, how do we relate this to the equilibrium? We know that equilibrium is established in reactions which take place in both directions. That is, the reactant is turning into products. At the same time, the products are also turning into reactants. And at that point where the rate of reactants turning into products and products turning into reactants is equal, that is the state which is known as the state of equilibrium. So if there is a reaction which is proceeding in both directions and you add a catalyst to it, what will happen? If you do not add a catalyst, the activation energy will be for both the directions. This is the activation energy for the reaction to take place in the forward direction and this is the activation energy which is required for the reaction to take place in the backward direction. When you added a catalyst, the activation energy, the curve itself got shorter. 
and the activation energy, the difference in energy uh, caused by the assistance of the catalyst is this much and this difference is in both the directions. So the catalyst is actually helping equally the reaction in both the directions. So the ease that the reactants get by the presence of a catalyst to turn into products, the same amount of energy decrease will be experienced by the opposite direction reaction also. So we can say that the presence of a catalyst decreases the activation energy in both the directions and therefore equilibrium is achieved faster. So what is the effect of addition of a catalyst to equilibrium? When you add a catalyst to the equilibrium, a reaction which acquires equilibrium, the presence of a catalyst helps the reaction to acquire equilibrium faster. It makes it easier for it to acquire the equilibrium. So how, and how does it do it? It does it by increasing the rate of both forward and backward reactions. It increases the rate. The, it becomes faster. So the catalyst increases the rate of forward and backward reactions. It decreases the activation energy equally in both the directions. And remember, while it does, it is only helping the reaction to acquire equilibrium faster. It does not affect the value of Kc or Kp. The concentrations and partial pressures of the reactants and products at equilibrium, they remain the same. The presence, like whatever you answers you wrote in your exam are your answers. The catalyst, that is the teacher, only helped you prepare for those. So the presence of a catalyst only increases the speed of reaction in both directions. It does not affect the concentration of the reactants and products at equilibrium. Now, let us take this one example of ammonia being formed from nitrogen and hydrogen. This is a highly exothermic reaction. N2 plus 3H2 gives you twice NH3. It's a reversible reaction. In the reactants, you have four moles, that is one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen. Total number of moles is four. And in the products, you have two moles of ammonia. All of them are gaseous. From whatever we have studied in the previous videos now, we will refer to that and understand the effect of catalyst. This is a highly exothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction is one in which the energy is given out. And we notice that there is a decrease in the number of moles. And we have studied the effect of pressure. We have studied the effect of temperature on reactions. So what is the effect of pressure? If I decrease the volume by half for this reaction mixture, the effect on pressure, if you decrease the volume, the pressure becomes double. So on the reactant side, you have four volumes and on the product side, you have only two volumes. So when you decrease the volume, the effect of pressure will be greater on the reactant side because four volumes are getting, the pressure is four into two, if it gets doubled, is eight times. While here, it is only four times. So the effect of pressure is more, increasing the pressure is more on the reactant side. And therefore, when you increase the pressure, the reactant will, according to Lee Shatler principle, the reaction will proceed in that direction, which removes that stress, that increase in pressure. It will move in that direction, which decreases the pressure. So it will move in the forward direction. So we know for this particular reaction, where the difference of number of moles is there, for this reaction, increase of pressure should favor the forward reaction, right? Another thing that we had studied in the uh, previous video was that what is the effect of temperature on an exothermic reaction? An exothermic reaction is one which loses energy. So if it loses energy, it needs cooler surroundings because it becomes easier to lose energy. So this reaction should be favored by low temperatures. You understand this? That why? Because the value of Kc depends on the temperature. Let me just read this. So increase in pressure favors the forward reaction where the number of moles decreases. I've explained this to you. Let us now come to temperature. The value of Kc itself decreases with increase of temperature. Where? When the reaction is exothermic, the value of Kc decreases with increase of temperature. If you do not understand this point, 
I would suggest you go to video 21 where I explain the effect of temperature. So the value of Kc decreases as temperature is increased because it's an exothermic reaction. It will not be favored by an increase in temperature. But with temperature, there's a problem. I told you when you're working out in the gym, whether the reaction is exothermic or not, you need to warm up first. You need to have some heat to even start reacting. So you at least need a little temperature first to start the reaction. If you're absolutely cold, you're absolutely tired, you don't want to move, will you even react? So the problem with temperature is that it is a, especially for an exothermic reaction, it is a two-pronged sword, you know. If the temperature is low, the rate of a reaction is less. I do not have energy, the temperature is low, so rate of reaction would be less. I will work out, I will run slower, I will work out lesser in the gym. So the low temperature, it decreases the rate of the reaction and therefore it takes time to achieve equilibrium. And a high temperature will, if the temperature is high, the reaction is faster. But what's the problem? The problem is that this reaction is exothermic. And if the reaction is exothermic, then high temperature is actually not favoring the reaction. It may make it faster, but the yield, that is the amount of products, will not be enough. And that is not what we want. In this process, our aim is to get ammonia. And if it's an exothermic process, high temperature will not favor the yield. And low temperature will not favor the speed. So we are in a fix. What do we do? If I increase the temperature, I don't get enough yield. If I decrease the temperature, these two do not want to react. They don't have the energy to react. So there was a scientist called Fritz Haber. He was a German physicist. He found out a solution for this problem. What did he do? He said that it is possible to have certain favorable conditions. And if I increase the temperature, the reaction, the yield will not be favored. If I decrease the temperature, the reaction itself would not happen happily. So let me bring the temperature. Let me make use of this knowledge of pressure. Let me first increase the pressure so that the forward reaction is favored. Then let me keep the temperature at a certain state which is neither too high nor too low so that the speed is also kind of maintained and the yield is also favored. And let me bring in a catalyst to help this reaction. So that is what he did. He took iron and iron was to act as a catalyst and he found that when I carry out this reaction at 500 degrees Celsius and the pressure is increased to 200 atmosphere and I use iron as a catalyst, that is when I get the best yield for ammonia. And that is how this these conditions, preparing ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen under these conditions is popularly known as Haber's process. And industrially, this is how ammonia is prepared by the Haber's process. And that is how the Haber, Fritz Haber, he became famous by using the Haber's process for manufacture of ammonia. Similarly, the preparation of sulfuric acid, sulfur trioxide for proper preparation of sulfuric acid, the process that is used is known as contact process. And in this process, this is one of the steps where sulfur trioxide is prepared. And similarly, a catalyst is used here also in order to achieve equilibrium faster. And remember, the presence of catalyst is not going to affect the concentrations of the reactants and products. It's only going to increase the speed of the reaction. In order to increase the yield of the product, we used temperature and pressure in the case of Haber's process. In this process, in context process, you have sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen to give you sulfur trioxide. And the value of Kc for this reaction is pretty high. The value of Kc is high. Kc, what is Kc? Kc is the ratio of the concentrations of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. If the value of Kc is high, it means the concentration of the products is high. It means that sulfur, the, in the, at equilibrium, the concentration of the product would be high. It means it's a reaction that is favored for the forward direction. But 
The problem with this reaction is that it is very slow. It's a slow reaction, although the value of Kc is very high, the rate of this reaction is not fast. And in order to increase that rate, we bring in a, the catalyst either platinum or vanadium pentoxide. B2O5 or platinum are used and that increases the yield of, it increases the speed of this reaction or the rate of this reaction. So without catalyst, the reaction is very slow. Although the value of Kc is very high, yet this reaction is extremely slow. And therefore, the presence of this catalyst increases the rate of the reaction. If, let us assume that you have a reaction which has a very low value of Kc. It means that at equilibrium, the product is not present in large quantities. It is the concentration of reactants which is high. What does that mean? It means the reactants do not want to react to form the product. So if the value of Kc is very low, then even if you keep bringing in a catalyst and you keep giving it help, that reaction will still not be helped by the presence of a catalyst. For example, if there is, uh, like I am in no mood to react, to uh, go to the gym today, I am in no mood to participate in that race today, you may bring in whoever you want to help me out, you may do whatever, I may eat as much food as I want to get that activation energy to start. But if I'm not in the mood to react at all, then even the presence of a catalyst will not help. If you do not want to prepare for your examination, even me helping you out would not help. There has to be a desire to react. So the value of Kc is kind of an indication whether the reaction, there is a desire for the reactants to react also or is it not there. So if the value of Kc is very low, even the presence of a catalyst does not help the chemical reaction in the forward direction. So or it does not help. So this was the effect of catalyst and with this we come to an end of the factors that affect uh, equilibrium. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.